I, I've seen some cases where, and uh, like actually recently, yes. with uh, a patient who came all the way to Kachaliba and they were from Trukana. Yes, this was an adult mm. of 35 years, mm. and he was so incapacitated that mm. he could hardly walk. Mm. So you can imagine the livelihood of this person. Yes, it, he, he himself needs care, even mm. to be brought to the hospital by well wishers. Mm. So you, you know, that tells you that he's not able to take care of himself. Mm. And he's not able to take care of his family. Yes. Uh, but the good thing about uh, the, the, you know, the, the work that is ongoing is that uh, actually after a few days of treatment, yes, yeah. this man was up and about and you, you can see the improvement. Mm -hmm. Patients with uh, what we call cutaneous leishmaniasis, an mm -hmm. ulcer in the skin that yes. is caused by a bite of a sunfly. Mm -hmm. Um, it depends where that bite that that, that answer is. Mm. So for a beautiful girl like you, mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's on the face, face yes. yes. and yeah. then you're looking for a potential husband yeah, to marry you, it's and a problem. You this, how do you? You don't even come out of yes. the house yes. because you just feel your cast mm -hmm. and everything. So mm -hmm. Margaret has said, mm -hmm. you yes. know, the children don't go to school. The the the, the working parents mm. don't even go to the garden to till mm -hmm. so you just find that it's a vicious cycle mm. of poverty disease yes. and malnutrition yes. yeah an estimated 1.1 million kenyans fall into poverty each year and that's because of health care costs would sha shi uhc change that or is there more or perhaps what's the difference between a pharmacy with a blue cross and a green cross what about cancer and the rising incidence amongst the youth? Is it just lifestyle changes or is there more? Women's health, men's health, your children's health, the economy, this and more awaits you on season two of Kenya's favorite health podcast. My name is Dr. Diana Wangarigitao and welcome to season two of the One Health Lens podcast. Hello, welcome to the One Health Lens Podcast, where we have conversations around health and related topics, making it simple and easy for you to understand. I'm your host, Dr. Diana Wangarigetau, and today we'll be talking about NTDs, neglected tropical diseases. I know, I know, I know. Um, most of you probably haven't heard of it, um, but you're about to learn. Um, I have very important guests. I mean, very important guest, as always, um, in studio with us. I'll let Professor Suna introduce herself and we'll get going. Prof? You can Hello. introduce. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Uh, Diana. Wanga Diana. 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 I yeah. can even be your daughter at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I am a medical doctor by profession and uh, specialized in internal medicine. Yes. And I am a specialist in tropical medicine and infectious diseases. I um, trained here in Kenya and yeah. also abroad yeah. uh, for my PhD. Mm. And uh, I spent all my wild life working on neglected tropical diseases. Yeah. I worked for the Kenya Medical Research Institute here yes. with Margaret, yes. <laughs> consider my daughter. Uh, yeah. um, and, and, and I was... Um, the director of the Center for Clinical Research yes. and rose up through the ranks. I went there as a young doctor, in yeah. fact. Mm. From medical school, I went to, uh, uh, did my internship in Kenya and then went mm. uh, to Cambry mm. as a young doctor. Yes. And I rose up the ranks yeah. to the position of director, Center for Clinical Research yeah. and uh, also acting director uh, of Cambry. Mm. And uh, during that time, I did a lot of clinical research uh, trying to find treatments for the most neglected patients because the treatments which were there were very toxic, not yeah. easy to use, and so on. I'm sure we'll get into that. Yeah. And then um, also then joined uh, Drugs for Neglected Diseases Initiative, uh, DNDI, as the regional director. And for the last 20 years, spent my life trying to um, continue with research yeah. and uh, trying to develop treatments mm. for neglected patients. Absolutely. Uh, especially in Leishmanasis. Mm. We may hear about it yes. later. Mm. Um, now I'm the DNDI um, a 
Africa ambassador. Africa ambassador. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a good title. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but in this role I engage African policy makers and stakeholders and other leaders uh, to support the ambition uh, in, 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 UH, in universal health coverage, mm. in the issues of treatments, in the mm. issue of access, mm. uh, because you know the treatments that are there yes. are, not, are not, uh, yes. not effective, they yes. are not easy to use, they are not safe. Mm. And so I, I, I try to, to support that uh, mm. through research and development so that we can produce treatments yes. that uh, Absolutely. When I so say this is me. <laughs> <laughs> no, this I mean a long life. <laughs> I, it, it does, and uh, with uh, impactful contribution. Impactful. I mean, uh, if I started listing some of the things you have not said, yes. uh, <laughs> it, it will be here for a while. But thank you for being here, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely, yeah. Doc. Introduce yourself. Okay. Mm, yes. Uh, thank you, Doctor Wangari, yeah. for. Uh, this opportunity to take part in the fo podcast. Yes. Uh, so my name is uh, Margaret Wanjiko Bucci. Yes. I'm a researcher, a principal research scientist at the Kenya Medical Research Institute. Mm. Um, I have worked for many years yes. in the area of NTDs, mm. and actually I consider it uh, an honor mm. to be in the same podcast with mm. Professor Wasuna. Royalty. Because she <laughs> she actually has been a mentor. Yes for many years yes. and uh, I have worked uh, in in the area of leishmaniasis yes um uh, but s specifically in mm. the area of basic sciences mm. uh, uh with uh, a lot of focus on diagnostics develop development yes. and evaluation and validation mm. for uh an NTD that is visceral leishmaniasis yes so I I'm also working in, in uh, also in the area of basic sciences yes uh in the area of understanding the immunological processes mm. underlying the disease yes. so that uh well, because when we understand that mm. then we can perhaps you know get some uh, uh, information yes that can be the basis for uh development of diagnostics yes. or, or uh, vaccines mm. and so that is the area I, I have been working in yeah and uh Thank you. I look forward to Absolutely. This podcast, we yes. we are all daughters of Professor Asuna. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, I'll start off with maybe what's what's NTDs, right? We're talking about neglected tropical diseases, and it's something that most of us are not familiar with, especially since one, we've come from a period where there's a focus on, yes, infectious diseases, but it's a lot of HIV, malaria, and then we seem to have jumped now to non-communicable uh, diabetes, hypertension, and cancers. But then there's this neglected tropical diseases. What What, what is it? Yeah. Okay, so um, neglected tropical diseases, according to the World Health Organization, mm. there are about 21 diseases that they have categorized as neglected tropical diseases. These are diseases that affect the poorest of the poor. There are about one over a billion people globally mm. have uh, neglected tropical, suffer from neglected tropical diseases. Mm or affected, actually, yes. the correct word is affected by neglected tropical diseases. Mm, yes. And 40% um, of these people are found in Africa. Mm. And they disproportionately affect children and mm. women. Yes. Um, and these diseases are neglected because for very many years, there's been no research and development mm. uh, towards them. Yes. So you find that uh, even like diagnosis, uh, to, to, to be able to diagnose mm. this disease is difficult because the, the, tr the diagnosis are not fit for purpose. Mm. Uh, some of them are invasive. Mm. And, and, and so uh, even the treatments that are there are very toxic. Uh, that's like the um, bad effects mm. and um, they're not easy to use and they're very expensive, yeah. they're ineffective. So the people that have this disease have been neglected over time. Mm. Because why? Because uh, the, is the research and development is very expensive. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And uh, the model that is there is profit driven. Yes. And so these people are poor. Mm. Uh, would they, they don't have purchasing power to buy these mm. medicines. Yes. And so 
why even why try focus, to make, focus on them <laughs> yes. so they are neglected. Mm-hmm. Yes. And also coupled with that, mm-hmm. there, there's been really no funding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was no funding 20 years ago for, for this kind of diseases. Yes. So, so first of all, there's no research, there's no money to do it, and the people are very poor, mm. and so they are set aside. Yes. So this is what we call uh, neglected tropical diseases yes. and there are 20 tw- about 21 of them I can name like a few, a that, few people yeah. that yeah. people can like be yes. for example people yes. know bilhazia yes people know a uh, sleeping sickness yes um and the, the one that is close to my heart yes. is leishmanasis of course I've spent all my working life as yes. a doctor and as a researcher yes trying to really um mm. focus on leishmanasis yes. in terms of treatments and sometimes with my sister on diagnosis uh, yes yeah Absolutely. So sleeping sickness is one of them yeah. as well. Absolutely. I mean, it makes <coughs> it makes the case of why even this conversation is important because you know we talk about universal health coverage, and that essentially means we shouldn't leave anyone behind, right? Doesn't matter what condition you have, it means that you should be taken care of, and if we are not really bringing these conversations to the forefront, then they're left behind, right? So then the question becomes around, <clears throat> if you were to think about it from a research, and you've uh, very well put it, that not a lot of research goes into it, right? Um, and you've said that even the research that goes into it is limited, so that then we are talking about we have drugs that have a lot of toxic effects, they're expensive, so very uh, you cannot access them, right? So I want to flick back to Margaret, right? Yeah. And mention, and maybe because you work right now on the research element, right? And the advantage of even working in Camry is you intersect a lot with communities. Yes. Maybe give us the picture of what we're now talking about theory, but what you see, the kind mm. of patients, the impact that they have on their day-to-day lives, right? In the communities, people mm. with NTDs. Yes. How, not how do they look like, but what's, what's that impact within the communities? Yes. Mm. Um, so um, I've worked um, in the area of leishmaniasis. Mm. And uh, as you said, mm. uh, the research that I've done and we've done of yes. necessity requ- has required that we go out to the field where yes. the patients are. Yes. Because, for example, if you are d- doing some research on diagnostics, you, you, you want to evaluate a, maybe a new di- diagnostic, mm. and you want to see the performance, mm. but also the utility uh, among the patients. And what you, you encounter in when you go out there in the endemic areas, yes. you find people who are really neglected mm. and really affected by the diseases. So, for example, in, with the uh, visceral leishmaniasis, uh, when you go to the hospitals, uh, you find people who come in, yes. they are so sick, they are incapacitated, they cannot even... I, I've seen some cases where, and, uh, like actually recently, yes. with uh, a patient who came all the way to Kachaliba and they were from Trukana. Yes. This was an adult mm. of 35 years. Mm. And he was so incapacitated that he could hardly walk. Mm. So you can imagine the livelihood of this person. Yes. If he, he himself needs care, even mm. to be brought to the hospital by well wishers. Mm. So you, you know, that tells you that he's not able to take care of himself, mm. and he's not able to take care of his family. Yes. Uh, but the good thing about uh, the, the, you know, the, the work that is ongoing, is that uh, actually after a few days of treatment. Yes. Yeah. This man was up and about, and you, you can see the improvement. And yes. you really appreciate, you know, the efforts that have gone on to the research to fight the drugs and also to mm. fight the right diagnostics. Yes. So the disease also affects children, mm. and you find uh, children who are also very sick, mm. very sick, and you know they they are not able to go to school. Yes. And uh, they are. And they, usually they will come very emaciated and mm. very sick. They are also malnourished. Mm. I'm speaking now specifically on uh, the issue of visceral Yes. So this disease, uh, as an NTD, yes. you find that there is an interplay between that disease and the nutritional um, uh, aspects in yes. a community. Yes. And when combined, it really has very severe uh, you know, impact on the community. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I think that's what I can say. So NTDs... Mm. Mm 
have a, a very serious impact on the communities that are affected. Yes. And as we have already heard from um, Professor Wasuna that this disease is also tend to affect uh, the poorest of the poor. Mm. So you have a very pure P poor community yes. that is not economically empowered mm. and then you add on to it mm. an entity that is very debilitating yes so um i, I think the you know entities mm. require to really be you know integrated into mm. the universal health coverage mm. uh process yes yes absolutely can, yeah. can, I, yes. can, I, can i add something mm. that uh in these communities also mm. uh because of um the information or lack of information that yes. they have, you know, it, it the disease can lead into a stigma, mm. yeah? Mm. And also, um, for example, mm. patients with uh, what we call cutaneous leishmaniasis, an mm. ulcer in the skin that yes. is caused by a bite of a sunfly. Mm. Um, it depends where that bite that that, that ulcer is. Mm. So for a beautiful girl like you, mm. Mm. <laughs> if it's on the face, face yes. oof, and yeah. then you're looking for a potential husband uh, to marry know. you, it's a problem. This how do you you don't even come out of yes. the house yes. because you just feel your cast mm. and everything. Mm. So the the patients en end up being depressed mm -hmm. alone mm. Um, uh, in, in 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 their world. Yes. So I think that's the importance of them, apart, of course, mm -hmm. uh, Margaret has said, mm -hmm. you yes. know, the children don't go to school, the, 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 the working parents mm -hmm. don't even go to the garden to till. Mm -hmm. So you just find that it's a vicious cycle mm -hmm. of poverty, disease, yes. and malnutrition. Yes. Yeah, it's Absolutely. a vicious, vicious cycle. And for Leishmanas is where both Margaret and I work on the yes. area. Mm -hmm for that the visceral type because there are many many types the mm. skin type then mm. the, the one that affects the internal organs yes. and then the one that affects the what we call the mucus mm. membrane, the covering of the mouth the nose yes. mm -hmm. so the one that affects the internal organs is a very serious one mm. so yes. without treatment mm. you die mm. yes. so that's why uh, mm. there's an urgency to find treatments for them mm, absolutely i mean prof there's definitely been programs initiative that have been ongoing, right? Because, of course, it's nothing new. It's just that, uh, as you said, it's, there hasn't been a lot of focus, right? Mm -hmm. Can you maybe tell us, and especially the experience, you've been in this field for decades, right? What, could poten what are existing programs initiatives that have been there? Just briefly, so that we know we're not starting from scratch. We're not saying that uh, this is, we must now put in money to start from zero. What are the mm -hmm. programs that have been there? Okay, there's so much going on, yes. even in terms of uh, in countries, like, for example, the ministries yes. of health. Yes. Uh, they, they, they're doing everything, like, yes. for example, in Kenya, yes. you have the Department of uh, uh, Neglected Tropical Diseases yes. within the Ministry of Health, and yes. they have various uh, control programs yes. going on. Yes. And so that is ongoing. But yes. I think the... What w what what we uh, what we need mm. is is uh, integrated approach, yeah? yeah. Where we bring all these programs together, the diagnostic one, the treatment, yes. You know, like in kind of one one health, and that is also going. Yes. Um, I think what's important and what we mm. and, uh, and drugs for neglected diseases have been doing yes. is research mm. and innovation. Yes. So because you need research and innovation mm. to be able to develop new tools. Mm that will be able to um, uh, diagnose mm. and treat mm. uh, neglected uh, diseases. Mm. Because uh, for us to achieve uh, universal health coverage, yes. we have to have new tools yes. for, you know, to be able to diagnose and to, yes. be, able to be able to treat mm. and sometimes to be able to vaccinate. Yes. Yeah? Mm. And so these are some of the things that are ongoing. Mm. I think also what has been ongoing is um, in terms of, like for example, mm. Africa, Yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the AU mm. uh, through AU, uh, they have come up with a um, uh, continental framework yes. of elimination of of, of uh, neglected tropical diseases, yes. and so there's like a blueprint on what countries should do mm. to be able to eliminate uh, the uh, the neglected tropical diseases, yes. and so that is also some programs that are ongoing. Mm. We have the World Health Organization having s um, plan. Yes. Uh, a roadmap mm. 2021 to mm. 2030 on elimination mm. uh, of, of, uh, of 
of uh, neglected tropical diseases. Yes. So the elimination programs are catching up mm -hmm. and uh, countries are eliminating uh, some of these neglected tropical diseases yes. and that is really a plus. Yes. So there are a lot of elimination programs and uh, a lot of research and development mm. programs, but also we have mm. to look for money. Mm. Uh, there's, uh, there, there are lots of programs also try to find money yes. to be able to uh, to do research. Mm. So I think uh, we, we have to look internally, countries mm. have to look inwards mm. and try to raise domestic funding. Mm. Because for how long shall we ask others to help yes. us? For how long? So we have to <laughs> yes. try in our own uh, look inside and yeah. try to uh, get money to to be able to uh, mm. to do uh, some of this work mm. so i think um what is important is of course collaboration and partnerships yes. and uh, all those kind of uh, programs as mm. well mm. because we can't do it alone yeah. uh, we can't we can't tackle neglected tropical diseases alone because mm. apart from patients being neglected they also live in the middle of nowhere mm. sometimes yes. um and so um uh, some of the programs yeah. to deal with that, um, yeah, mm -hmm. and and I think strengthening the health systems. Mm. Uh, there are some programs because we have to have a strengthened health system yes. to be able to deal with mm. neglected tropical diseases. Mm. Yes, absolutely. But awareness, mm. you know, there are very many programs mm. that really have to make mm. the people aware and tell them that there are these diseases, and and, and especially for uh, the leishmaniasis where we work yes. in. Yeah. Uh, treatments are available, mm. but they are not. They may not be that optimal. Yes. But at least some some treatment is there. Yes. And why should somebody die when there's a treatment? Of course, some of them, you know, you have some side effects, mm. but you mm. get treated. Mm. So, I think that knowledge also is there. there are those programs to educate people to make them aware. And what we are doing here now is part of that. Part of uh, that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's, and maybe let's even take that example of mm. Leishmaniasis, mm. right? Mm. What's, and from a very community perspective, I'm turning to you yes. all about community, <laughs> but what can be done to hasten some of these interventions, right? And mm. I know Prof has mentioned some of them, but from a very practical perspective, giving us maybe examples, right? Because mm. there's, yes, from a policy level, but from a very on the ground, what can be done? Is it more about just community engagement? What can be done? Yes, mm. um, I think uh, at community level, mm. uh, there's a need to, to have a lot of uh, advocacy mm. at community level. Mm. And uh, so that uh, when patients like for example you, you sometimes you find that you have a patient that has come into a hospital mm. and they come from a certain location in mm. the endemic foci mm. mm. and you find that you, you have quite a number of people coming in from that you know region mm, yes. and uh, it is very important that uh, that community is sensitized it's very important that uh, perhaps you know the the stakeholders uh, you know the county at county level uh, and of course, in partnership with other partners, mm. uh, you know, have regular like outreaches yes. to sensitize mm. in bazaars. Uh, in you know, yeah. uh, sometimes when we have had to do research mm. and we needed to get uh, a certain number of patients, for example, to to enroll into a study to mm. answer certain questions. We you know we have found that when you go and interact with the community leadership. Mm in bazaars, in marketplaces, mm. uh, then those are opportunities that can become very useful yes. to sensitize the community, to educate the community. Mm. Sometimes you you may even consider mm. using, you know, uh, cases of individuals who have had the disease and they have recovered and now they have a livelihood mm. and make them ambassadors, yes. you know, uh, as you interact with the communities. Mm. But there is need to really go out there and have a sustained mm. continuous engagement with the community mm. so that uh, because the more they know yes and especially when they see their own that mm. has suffered mm. and you you know th you have come mm. or you know they have come to the hospital and they have gone back you know restored mm. and the difference is is as night and day i mm. tell you when you see a patient who has had uh, you know, like a severe case of uh, visceral ischemiasis, mm. and they are treated and they go back. It's unbelievable mm. the changes, especially among children. Mm. So those 
you know, they can, those can be, uh, they are ambassadors. And this needs to be a continued, mm. sustained effort yes. so that you engage as many people as possible. Mm. The other approach is perhaps, uh, and this has been covered in the, in the national strategy for elimination, mm. is to anticipate that as we move towards uh, elimination, mm. one of the things that need uh, to be done is to, yes, improve the diagnostics, get uh, and, and have as many people uh, diagnosed as early as possible. Yeah. And we, we I, I think in the national uh, mm. strategy, the, the timelines are that once you have diagnosed, mm. within 30 days, this mm. person should be in the hospital receiving treatment. Mm. So, and the other thing to do is perhaps to go out and do active case finding, yes. where you have a clinical team, mm. a lab team, a community, community persons, uh, go out in the field, eh? Uh, and actually, you know, look for patients. Uh, mm, yeah. Actually, we have had some uh, community mm. um, health workers yes. in the past who are trained. They could actually palpate the, the mm. spleen. And, they, you know, they can actually pick out. Mm. So, you, you know, uh, if you work with them, you can improve the number of, uh, you know, cases that are diagnosed early mm -hmm. enough and yeah. therefore access treatment early enough. Mm but they need to have that community engagement, advocacy at different levels. Mm. But since we are talking about uh, a community level, yes. that advocacy needs to go all the way to the community level. Absolutely. Yes. It's within their local language yes. Yes. where they mm. congregate naturally. Because yes. then the cycle is, as, as Prof mentioned, it's yeah. communities that normally wouldn't be reading the paper, for yeah, example, yeah. right? Um, and so, Prof, I'll come to you for final words, comments, um, what, I mean, input as well. Uh, what would be sort of first reactions from a community? Are we doing, are we doing well? And what, what would be, say, your call to action? <laughs> yeah, mm? so um, I, I need to, first of all, say that um, the community that really is critical are these vulnerable communities. Yes. These are the children yes. um, and, and, and mothers. Yes. Yeah? Mm. Mothers who are either want to get pregnant yes. or those who are already pregnant mm. or those who are breastfeeding. These are the ones that have been marginalized mm. and these are the ones that are also uh, most affected. Mm. So we, we need to um, incorporate them also into yes. research, in the research that we are doing. Mm. Right now, the kind of research that is being done is excluding these communities. Yes. Yeah? And so how do you get treatments mm. then that also are useful to them if mm. you have excluded them and yes. then you're going to give them treatments that you've used other people to, to come to a conclusion? Yes. So I think that the research and development needs to focus on this vulnerable populations mm. because we cannot achieve UH, uh, UHC mm. without uh, incorporating the entities mm. within the UHC, yes. uh, universal health coverage, yes. and uh, also um, uh, these uh, neglected populations. Mm. So for me, I would say that, um, and of course, I also I don't want to end this podcast without bringing in the issue of climate change. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Because cl climate change is now a game changer, mm, yeah? Mm. It's affecting <laughs> most of, mm. of the countries of the world. Mm. And uh, it's bringing in, because of the change of temperatures and change of vector control and mm. all that, uh, there's increased rainfall. You've mm. seen even what has happened in on our country in the mm. recent past. Yes. Very sad indeed. Mm. All those effects, they tend to increase mm. the neglected tropical diseases. Yes. Yeah. So we have to manage uh, the climate change uh, mm. effectively. Mm. And one of the serious uh, uh, neglect trop tropical diseases mm. uh, that comes along with this sort of ch climate change is dengue. Mm. And dengue fever is a virus mm. uh, uh, infection that carried by yes. uh, a mosquito. Mm. And once it, it is causes havoc because mm there's no known treatment for it. Mm. And uh, it's killing a lot of people mm. and it's affecting a lot of people, even mm. in countries where uh, there is not mm. there before, uh, yes. it, it, they're getting the dengue. Even for leishmanasis, if mm. in our own country here, mm. 
it used to be, I think, Margaret, is it six counties? Now mm. it's in 11 counties or mm. something like yeah. that. Mm. So you can see the effects of climate change. Mm. So I just wanted to also mm. bring right. the issue of climate change into mm. the picture. That is a big problem. Mm. So my, uh, my closing remark would be we, we as a people, we are in this together. We have to work together Absolutely. and stop working in silos uh, because uh, that neglected tropical diseases and other infectious diseases and ink are on, I on the increase. And mm -hmm. so we need concerted effort. Mm -hmm. We need to collaborate. We need to make partnerships and we, and we need to share ideas. And also we need to find funding mm -hmm. to be able to help these populations. Mm -hmm. um, because if you... If you go alone, yes. you go so far. <laughs> Fine, yes, <laughs> absolutely. If together we go further. So mm. my yeah. call would be let us work together absolutely. to eliminate uh, neglected mm. diseases. Absolutely. And I like that. And I like the fact that you brought in even the climate change aspect because, as you say, right, right now it might appear as if it's uh, affecting just one population or one segment, but over time it would be something that, as you say, dengue fever, it's something that a lot of people hadn't heard of mm. and then they hear there's an outbreak, they start looking, right? And the approach is that we need to actually come together so that we're not waiting till it's an outbreak for people to say now we need to address it we need to focus on exactly. it exactly right exactly. yeah mm -hmm. Prof, thank you so much for coming. Dr. Margaret, thank you. It's just the beginning of this conversation, just the beginning. 21 diseases, there's a lot. I'm sure, Dr. Margaret, if we started talking about the stories, we would be here. But mm. thank you. Thank you so much for coming. And we'll continue talking. Thank you for thank inviting you. us. It was Anytime. Talking to you. <laughs> thank you so much. And this is the forum that we need to yes. continue, you know, having, continue this. having so Absolutely. that we bring information to the people. Absolutely. And thank you so much for joining us on the One Health Lands podcast. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.